the situation right now is actually quite unprecedented in the history of the United States. Um, usually a sitting president has never refused uh, the results of a lawful election. So uh, Trump's refusal to concede the election to Joe Biden is completely unprecedented. It happened only once before in the history of the United States, uh, and that was just before the Civil War, when Abraham Lincoln was elected president on an anti-slavery platform. Uh, many of the lower South states, in fact, all of them, uh, seceded from the Union rather than accept the results of the presidential elections. But that was such an exception to the rule because that led to four years of civil war. So what Trump is doing is very, very dangerous uh, and very unprecedented in, in times of peace. We know from recent polls that a majority, an overwhelming majority of American voters and American citizens, that's 80 percent, which includes those who voted for Trump, uh, have accepted the results of the election. They think that he has lost the election and Joe Biden has won it because the margin of victory is so wide that there is no doubt uh, that Biden Harris have won. What is more shocking is the Republican Party. The leaders of the Republican Party, like Mitch McConnell, who is the Senate Majority Leader, uh, some governors of states, today the governor of West Virginia, um, and others have backed Trump's false claims, even if that means attacking members of their own party, for instance, like the Republican Secretary of State of Georgia, and, and making him do a handcuff of all the votes in Georgia, which just prolongs the agony, I think, for everyone, where the margin of victory is again substantial for a very deep red state. Georgia has gone by over 14,000 votes for Joe Biden. Well, you know, um, the last time that happened in uh, Bush versus Gore in 2000, uh, they actually passed some laws to facilitate a more smooth transition uh, of power. Uh, and at that time, it was one state and it was 500 votes. Uh, that was uh, around 500 votes that was on the balance. At this time, there is no, um, you know, it's not even close. So the idea of it going to Supreme, the Supreme Court, uh, especially one that is very right-leaning, very right-wing, uh, Republican-dominated, seems to be a little unlikely. Uh, because all these frivolous lawsuits that Trump has initiated, his campaign has initiated, have all been thrown out at the lower levels uh, of the federal judiciary. And I'm thinking that most of the judges in the Supreme Court are hoping that that is what happens because uh, it just does not, you know, the margins are just so wide in each one of these states uh, and they have not brought any evidence of fraud. So ironically, all the frauds that we have discovered so far have come from the Republican Party itself. So I, I don't see the possibility of these legal challenges uh, working their way through the Supreme Court. What might they might do is try to use some kind of arcane constitutional provisions to somehow invalidate the votes uh, for Joe Biden. So I have seen speculation that the Republican state legislature in Pennsylvania might try to decide the electoral votes of the state rather than the duly elected uh, electors. If they do that, that'll be a real blow uh, to the democratic system and the electoral process. Uh, I'm not sure whether they will go that far, but I, I don't put it past them. You know, they might try some trick, some constitutional trick that they can because the system is very antiquated uh, and somewhat anti-democratic, the whole electoral college system. Um, so that needs to be reformed. I think that is something that this election tells us, that we need to reform the way in which we elect our presidents. Um, so they might try something like that. I don't think the court challenges would really work.